if Modern Warfare was your very first Call of Duty, transitioning to Cold War is going to be a whole nother experience for you. And I totally understand that, man. It's going to be very frustrating. Cold War is more fast paced. It promotes a faster play style. Modern Warfare is more about a safe space, you know, a place to camp and they hide and all that stuff, you know, and I'm not just making this up. That literally came straight from the developer's mouth. So I'm not making anything up here. Black Ops Cold War has a lot of a higher skill gap. So I can see where the frustration comes into every single year. There is always an adjustment period but you know what just hang in there for me man it's gonna get better trust me so today we're gonna go over some first date beginner tips that will help you improve and have a lot more fun and make it more enjoyable for your experience so make sure to drop a like if you do find this video helpful and make sure to subscribe if you're brand new around here also turn on notifications as well so you never miss another video and you can make your way back to the channel so we're gonna start off here with the controller setting now this is very important if you do not have the right sensitivity or the right ads stick sensitivity low zoom then you are definitely going to be struggling in Call of Duty Cold War because you're not going to be able to feel comfortable moving into gunfights and that's very important. If you're not feeling comfortable then obviously you're going to die a lot and that's going to lead to a lot of frustration. So if you want a little bit more in-depth video on how to find your perfect sensitivity make sure to check out my previous video link down below in the description and also on the top right hand corner you can click on that card at any point in time in the video. Finding your best sensitivity is going to be very important. Like I was saying it's an adjustment period so you do want to make sure you're acclimated really well to the cold war style of play another key important setting that you need to pay attention to is your left stick minimum input threshold as well as your right stick minimum input threshold so this is basically your dead zone this is what is going to make your character move to the left or to the right up and down or your crosshairs are going to be moving on their own without you even touching the controller so make sure that you get these settings correctly the lower you go the more prone that your character is going to move on its own or the crosshairs are going to move on their own and that's why you got to read these descriptions carefully not to go below a certain threshold everybody's controller is going to be different make sure you go into a private match and you test out what your thresholds are and put on the best threshold for you since i'm on pc now it's very interesting how the thresholds have changed so i had to go ahead and adjust my settings once again versus ps4 it was at a much lower number so i don't really understand why that is you know i'm not really a technical guy like that but as far as i know moving on to pc i had to adjust this for me and by the way if you want a more in-depth video Video covering all the best settings make sure to check out my cold war video that i posted earlier today as well link will be down below in the description like i said i'm just going to be breezing through these giving you guys the most important settings that you need to be paying attention to now the ads field of view i did see a comment talking about how oh they hate how the gun is so zoomed in well the reason why is because you most likely have your setting on independent now if you look at the description here it says aiming down sights will zoom the field of view to its intended value so if your field of view is like let's say like 105 right everything looks all small and minuscule so if you have it on independent it's going to zoom in that much more it's going to give off that illusion that you're zoomed in a lot more it's going to be a pain trying to get a more accurate shot on your opponent now for my recommendation if you're playing multiplayer then I would definitely go with affected because affected doesn't zoom in the gun too much into your face to the point where you're distracted and you're not able to hit your opponents a lot easier. So that's why I would go with affected. Independent is more for those larger game modes like Warzone, for example, where you're going to engage in long range gunfights. That is where it's more desirable to have a much more zoom when you're aiming down sights, especially if you're playing on a higher field of view. Now let's talk about actually playing the game. When you first get into your account, you're going to be level four and you literally have no no classes to use i mean you could use the xm4 but i do not recommend that just use the pre-made class setups that is your ticket to dying a lot less and also staying alive a lot longer because if you select the overwatch class setup that one has the only perk you need in the beginning stages of the game which is going to be ghost because if you're going to notice a lot of people are spamming uavs and that is why you're dying so quickly because enemies know exactly where you are like i said information is everything if the enemy has a lot of information on you they are going to know where you're at and that's how you're dying so much so staying undetected is going to be key in your survival and personally once i changed to the overwatch class i had a lot more success in my games i was enjoying it a lot more and the point is to be able to level up until level 17 so that you can unlock that ghost perk i wouldn't worry so much about trying to level up the xm4 or the mp5 right off the rip you're just going to have a hard time trying to level up those guns because there's literally no attachments on it you don't have the greatest perk selection if you're going to make your own loadout from the beginning so that's why just go with the overwatch setup it has double
double the lethals, double the tacticals, and it has a decent equipment that you can put down that will take down enemy score streaks for you. This will save you a lot of pain. And also the secondary is a shotgun and that's very useful and it's actually pretty OP and great for close quarter combat. Since the M16 has a scope on it, you're using that more for mid to long range gunfights. So it's a very versatile class setup in my opinion and I definitely do recommend that you stick with this class setup until you hit level 17 you know it's really up to you and then you can put on that ghost perk and then you know, use the XM4 and try to level it up that way you know that's just my advice. Alright so my next advice for your first day beginner tips is to play only Fireteam Dirty Bomb and Combined Arms Mosh Pit. Now, I know this is really crazy because we're all used to the, you know, traditional game modes like TDM, Domination, Kill Confirmed, etc. You know, while those are pretty solid game modes to play, you know, let's just face it, man. It's just super sweaty. It's super sweaty, especially when you're put into lobbies where people are actually a higher level than you and you have no perks, no weapons to use. And it's a little bit harder to come by on the engagements. So that's why it's going to be harder for you to level up if you're going to play those game modes. So yeah you you know if you go off you know you can earn a lot of score but at the same time you know it's at the cost of you know you're just wasting a lot of time in game you know i'd rather play one long game session and level up a bunch definitely give fire team dirty bomb a chance make sure to try to loot the boxes you get xp for that as well and also play the objective and it's just so easy to just find a power position in fire team dirty bomb and just repeatedly kill enemies who keep flying into the area it's just so easy especially with the class setup that I do recommend of the Overwatch class setup. That is perfect for Fireteam Dirty Bomb as well as Combined Arms Mosh Pit. Now Combined Arms Mosh Pit, you could definitely go off on there. The interactions are a lot more consistent and a lot more regular. It's a lot easier to go on higher streaks on that game mode. So my next tip is once you decide, okay, you know what? I have the Ghost Perk. I'm going to go for the XM4 Gold. And once you start ranking up the weapon and, unlock and unlocking all these attachments, make sure to put on the Suppressor right away because that is what is also going to help you stay alive. If you don't have a Suppressor in Cold war you're literally just gonna flat out die super fast you're gonna notice that you're gonna get jumped right away if you also haven't noticed the mini map works normally now it's not the same in modern warfare so there again is another transition that is hard for most people to transition to if you came from modern warfare because when you fire your weapon in cold war you are gonna get shown on the enemy's mini map and they're gonna know exactly where you are so if you put on a suppressor you're not gonna be shown therefore you're gonna stay alive a lot longer and stay undetected so that is what i highly recommend put on a suppressor on any gun that you're trying to level up right away and also pair that up with ghost all right and once you start unlocking more streaks as you level up through the ranks i do recommend to stay with low streaks so it's easy to rack a lot more kills because if you just stick to the default setup where you know you have that chopper gunner all the way at the end it's, it's just gonna get boring for you and you're only getting 50 points per kill after you die and that's just very annoying when you're trying to hit a certain amount of score and you're just not gonna have a good time so that's why i'd personally recommend to stay with just the uav the care package and the predator missile you know i forgot the technical term for it but you guys know exactly what that is and it's fairly easy to get and it also helps you rack up a lot more kills as well especially when you get the uav you see enemies on the mini map because most people don't have ghost unlocked right now and then also the predator missile is going to get you easy kills as well so uh, it just makes a lot more sense and it's just easier to earn all right so now let's talk about some strategy and some tactics you know just general strategy and tactics on how to improve to stop dying and get more more kills first of all you just gotta relax man do not get frustrated like i said this is a transition it's a brand new call of duty everybody is trying to learn the maps you know it's all about map knowledge once you learn the maps you're gonna get more comfortable moving around the map you're gonna start to notice the different lines of sights high enemy traffic areas power positions to hold down you know these are all very important things that will make your experience a lot better once you know more so do not get frustrated with that just stick to the outskirts if you're just running around down the middle of the map you're gonna get killed 100% and you're not going to enjoy your time and also do not sprint too much unless the area is clear because if you're sprinting too much you're just not going to be ready for the enemy that's going to be around the corner who could hear your footsteps the footsteps are very audible in this game and it's very predictable so you have to be mindful of that as well and also ninja is a perk that you might want to consider equipping with your ghost perk so that you stay as undetected as possible super stealthy you know that's my personal play style me being a solo player this is very important since i don't have teammates with comms or teammates to back me up you know I'm pretty much on my own so that's how I learn all of these tactics is just through playing solo take your time don't rush too much you know always pre-aim around corners making sure it's clear always assume there's gonna be 
be an enemy around the corner that way you're prepared and not feeling like your bullets aren't registering because in reality the enemy already predicted your movement and that's why he got ready for you as soon as you turn around that corner and also try to hold down some power positions i'm not talking about camping camping in my definition is literally sitting in a corner waiting for people to walk by and by the way there's not a lot of campers in cold war because the ghost perk in order for the ghost perk to actually work you need to keep on moving if you're not moving then the ghost perk is not going to work so also keep that in mind so holding down power positions is like basically finding a high point in a map where it's in the middle of a high enemy traffic area where you have great lines of sight with minimal points of entry for the enemies to come get you at so you're basically going to go back and forth from different points of entry lines of sights and just checking your surroundings and making sure that you're holding the enemy back from entering your area and this is how you're going to get a lot more kills and rack up those score streaks a lot easier so in future videos we're going to go over some specific tactics on maps and how to do that efficiently so that you can become more acclimated to how cold war is and how to be a much smarter and tactical player so yeah guys that's all the tips that i have for the first day beginner tips i hope that you go into cold war with an open mind optimistic after hearing this video you know, like I said, I struggled a lot in the beginning of Cold War and I just was not having a good time until I made these changes that I just shared with you today. So if you did find this video helpful, make sure to drop a like on it and subscribe if you are brand new around here for more Call of Duty content. We're going to be covering a lot of Cold War content this year and I would love for you to join me on the ride. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, guys. Make sure to cop yourself some G Fuel. You know, if you've never had G Fuel before, you can always buy a sample pack. They're relatively cheap and luckily for you my code turbo is now 30 percent off up until november 16th so if you want to go ahead grab you some g fuel now would be the time to do so